Well, you know, it's, it's when, when you start one of these companies, uh, it's, it's typically not the case that you get the whole idea fully formed, you know, instantaneously. We, we certainly, uh, there, there was this incredible internet boom going on in Silicon Valley in the late 90s. It felt that there was sort of this open frontier, open gold rush. One of the natural things to look at was, you know, was finance. I, I was sort of very interested in the cryptocurrency. Could there be new forms of money? There's always something, you know, super uh, uh, mysterious, powerful, important about money. And it was, was, it, was there a way that this, this was going to change? So we had, I think we had this general idea to do something with security, with money, with payments uh, from very early on uh, of the founding of the company. And then you iterate a lot on how to, how to get the idea out. And the, the critical question for any consumer internet product is always not what the idea is, but how do you get it out? How do you get the distribution out? And we spent, there have been a lot of payments companies, internet payments companies that, have, that already started and failed by 1998. There was one called, um, uh, one, uh, one called, uh, well, there was Cybercash. There were, you know, there, there, there's sort of um, a variety of these different ones that have tried to create these, you know, comprehensive currency schemes, um, and they would work if everybody used them but you could never get even the first person to start. And so <laughs> right. the, the, the challenge was how to make it viral. How do you get something to work where it's good for the first person, for the 10th person, for the 100th person? You know, once you have millions of people, you have a network, you have network effects. And that was sort of the chicken and egg problem. Yeah, so how solve. did you guys overcome that hurdle? Well, we eventually stumbled on this idea of uh, linking money with email because there were already 300 million people in 99 that had email accounts. And, uh, and so if you could send money um, to an email address, you know, I'd, um, I'd send it to your email, and then you'd get an email saying you've received cash, and then you'd obviously cl click on the links and do the work necessary to get the money out. And, yeah. so, um, and so you didn't need both counterparts to a transaction to be part of the PayPal network. Only the sender could be part of it, and then the recipient, um, the recipient would sign up as they took the money out. And, uh, and then uh, we started with the 24 people in our office. Those were the first 24 customers. And they sent money to friends and to other people. We gave these referral bonuses. We gave you $10 if you signed up, and $10 if you got someone to sign up. And it just uh, grew exponentially. When we were, you know, uh, it grew about 7 to 10% compounding daily. And wow. if you're, you know, uh, and even if you start with a small number, if you can get 7 to 10% daily compounding, you know, after about a month, you're at 1,000 people. By uh, that was mid November of '99. By end of uh, December of '99, it was at uh, 12,000. By February 3rd, 2000, it was at 100,000. By mid April 2000, it was up to a million. And so, so what did you do in terms of getting people to understand the way you could uh, work with money differently? Because I actually remember the first time I used PayPal. I think it was in 2001. I was a struggling comic. I had moved into a roommate's. Uh, little apartment because I didn't have much money and I but I had to pay him a couple hundred bucks or something a month for uh, For rent and he I was gonna give him a check He said PayPal me and the just the idea that I was somehow linking my bank account to something on the computer uh, We didn't even have I don't know if I'm not mistaken. I think I was still using dial-up I don't even know that we you know had had Wi-Fi or anything like that but it's about an idea that this can even happen. How did you train people to realize that well, it's always, this is something that's real and it's you can always, use it? Um, you, it's, it's, it's normally you sort of to get people to start doing something like that, it has to be something where there's an intense need and, um, and maybe it's not too dangerous. And so the, you know, one of the natural places it started was on the eBay auction site where you had small dollar transactions, maybe $40 with the typical amount. And uh, if you send check across the country, that's like a seven to 10 delay. 10-day delay, it's mm -hmm. slow. Um, most, most people aren't set up to process credit cards. Your roommate probably couldn't process credit cards. <laughs> and so, uh, and so you if, but since you could make PayPal payments with a credit card, you could in effect send a credit card payment to um, 300 million people, whereas there are only something like three or four million that are set up to process. Uh, um, cr there are like 150 million people with emails in the US at the time, mm -hmm. and there may be three million that were set up to process credit cards, small businesses, things like that. So we expanded it by you know, 147 million. Do you remember what it felt like as it started compounding the way you're talking about? Well, like it was, what it, it was, felt like as it was growing and you realized like, wow, we really have this thing. Well, you are, you know, you're at the, at, the, at the forefront of like some sort of revolutionary thing. It, 
it's incredibly uh, exciting and it's incredibly scary. And it was, uh, it was like going to take over the world, or we're all going to die. And you, <laughs> you move several times between, you know, um, that those two uh, several times a day. Yeah. Was uh, there any bizarre pushback from banks or any anyone that was doing well, financial was, tra were, transactions you know, there, traditionally? It, there were cer certainly like more than more than our share of challenges. You had a, you had an enormous problem of fraud where people just. Uh, Figured out ways to hack the system and steal money, mm -hmm. and then um, and you can't simply get rid of fraud because you can always get rid of fraud if you make it cumbersome. But if it's easy, then it's also easy to defraud. And so sure. the challenge was how do you get it to be easy to use but hard to defraud, and that took you know, took some time. There um, certainly uh, banks didn't like it. There were you know there were all the the incumbent players that that didn't like something new, and then of course it was sort of in this um, in this uh, strange regulatory zone where. Uh, you know, it was a new form of payments, a new form of moving money, and uh, and you know, I, the, the way I often thought of it at the time was that we were in a race between technology and politics. And you know, the politicians didn't like us, but if we got the system, the PayPal network to be big enough, it would sort of overwhelm the regulators, and they'd have to accept it as a as a fait accompli. So the libertarian part of you must have loved that concept. Yeah, like no, you were actually doing something that libertarians are supposed sure, was, to do. You know, there was a an early 2000 conversation, uh, you know, one of the one of the execs at uh, PayPal said that you know, we need to hire a whole bunch of lawyers to <laughs> tell us what we what we can do or can't do. And said, no, we're not going to hire them. They'll just they'll tell us what we can't do. So we have to just go ahead and not hire the lawyers and just just do it. Yeah. Now you know the the sort of uh, I, I I actually I do not know if a company like PayPal could have been started even two three years later. So you know in the in the aftermath of 9/11, we got the Patriot Act in the U.S. and that. Uh, that attached, you know, much more regulatory scrutiny to uh, to financial transactions, to payments. The know your customer rules became much much trickier, and so uh, so I do think that uh, there's a weird way in which there was an opening to start a business like PayPal in 1999, 2000. Even uh, three years later, I, I think it might not have been possible. Yeah, and it's so cool to me just knowing a lot of your ideology and the libertarian ideas you care about and, and just going ahead and building what you want to build instead of waiting for other people to do it. I mean, you actually did it, and, and that's a pretty, it's a pretty great thing. Well, it was, it was, um, it was sort of the sen sense that you know, we were going to change the world, we're going to you know, um, give people more control over their money. We had all these ideas about you know, getting rid of central banks and creating a new currency. We never quite you know, got to the Bitcoin yeah. stage of it. But, we'll get to that later. But, uh, but, but certainly, uh, certainly, these ideas were you know, were incredibly motivational in, in doing it, and it it is always a little bit of a contrast from, you know, I, I always have this um, view on politics where it's both you know incredibly important and then in many ways incredibly frustrating yeah. because uh, it's so um, it's like the air we breathe it permeates our whole system and then it's also so hard to to ever change and you know as a you know as a college student I started you know this. Uh, conservative libertarian newspaper mm -hmm. at Stanford, the Stanford Review, and uh, and there's a lot. You know, it's important to have debates to discuss things, and then it's often so hard to uh, to change things. And the, the the PayPal hack was in a way, you know, we we we're, were going to change the world. We weren't going to ask for permission. We're, yeah, we're, you know, we're just tech technology over politics.